Here's a little poem I made about Jane that says, Jane was my hero when I was just a barefoot kid. And in my heart he is still riding, just like he always did. I paid my dime and in the darkness quietly took my place as cold chills would run all over me when the screen would flash his face. Now I was very little the first time he held my hand and he could see I was shaking and he took the time to calm me down. Now just a part of that big old crowd, well that's all I'd have been that day. But then he took my ragged old paper, smiled, and signed his name. Now Gene and Champ was something special, but life took them away. But the life they left for all of us sure makes this world a better place. When I hear someone saying, well, there ain't no heroes to look up to, I just introduce them to my hero. I just flip on the tube. There are no words I can express, just what he did for me. You know, he had God's extra blessing with what a hero can really be. As I grew from babe till now, why, well, I've become more than just a fan. And I often question God, are you for certain Gene was not a perfect man? <laughs> Yesterdays and memories Silver saddles in my dream I hear my mom still calling me Son, come on in, it's time for Jean Oh, the cold winter wind chills the prairie Where the cowboy I love used to roam Sure wish he was still back in the saddle And singing songs out where the tumbleweeds still roll The old bunkhouse, it's dark, it's quiet, it's dreary Its echo hums with a singing cowboy's song Yes, I sure wish he was still back in the saddle and sitting tall on his strawberry roam. The tumbleweed still rolled across my memory. Too many sunsets say done come and gone. But I sure wish he was still back in the saddle. Cause he could always turn the blue moon into gold. Oh, I wonder what it's like behind that mountain In the big ranch house the cowboy now calls home Heaven's angels must have danced across the prairie When the man upstairs said, cowboy, welcome home And the tumbleweeds still roll across my memory too many sunsets they've done come and gone But I sure wish he was still back in the saddle And singing songs out where the tumbleweed still rolls South of the border I rode back one day And there in a bay Sunsets they've done come and gone. But 
But I sure wish he'd still back in the saddle And singing songs out where the tumbleweed still blows You know, uh, I usually put on these programs and I have a long time and I, I kind of get laid back and talk about my heroes. Now some back people uh, think it's idol worship and stuff like that, but I don't just uh, do the cowboys. I do about everything I can do as far as history is concerned. And, uh, but i got a special place for the cowboys. And you know, a Western movie is the first movie ever made. It was made in 1903. It was called The Great Train Robbery with Bronco Billy Anderson, who went on to make about 300 movies in the silent days. And then there was William S. Hart. And in 1926, 27, and 28, the top box office attraction like Clint Eastwood, you know, and all these big stars today, Burt Reynolds and so forth, uh, the top box office draw was Tom Mix and his pony Tony. He brought respectability to the Western. He was flamboyant. And of course everybody knows he got killed in Arizona in 1940. But his, the number two box office draw that year, those years, was a, a cowboy just like Tom Mix and his name was Fred Thompson. And he died while still in his 20s. He stepped on a nail in 1928 and died just a day or two before Christmas in 1928. His name was Fred Thompson. And he made about 27 or 28 movies. And then, you know, then he kind of faded into the past. And many people don't even, they've never heard of him. But, you know, I always kind of bring him up. And then, of course, there come Ken Maynard, George O'Brien, Buck Jones. You just name them Bob Steele, Tom Tyler, and, and just so on. But when I came along in my day, there was uh, Gene Autry, Hobalong Cassidy, Roy Rogers, Alan Rocky Lane, uh, Bob Steele, uh, just on and on, Charles Sterry, and Tim Holt, and I, and I try to keep them remembered. And uh, you know the last movie Cowboy was alive last year. His name was Monty Hale. Many of y'all don't know him, but uh, if I can find a little picture of him, I'm going to show it to you that way. But as usual, I probably can Yeah, here he is. Last year, he was still alive, but he was in bad shape. His name was Monty Hale, and, uh, and his leading lady there was a young lady named Adrian Booth. And last year, we were in California. And he was sitting there at the table. He wasn't going to come. But uh, one of my friends, she, one of them, she was Gene Autry's uh, uh, personal secretary, she got him to get out of bed and come. And he was glad he did. And he had a wonderful time. And while he was sitting there, his beautiful leading lady, 82 years old, came walking through the door. And I mean, he had a wonderful time. And in 1946, now I have a, I have a 1942 uh, autograph from Gene Autry, and I may have brought it with me, but I was too little to remember that trip. But I remember becoming a Gene Autry fan in 1942. I was four years old. I don't remember anything about the trip meeting him, but I remember becoming a Gene Autry fan and singing his songs. I remember singing his songs. It must have been the next day. But the first cowboy that I ever walked up to was at the Suburban Theater to get an autograph, and it was Monty Hale. And I and while I was out there in California, I told him, I said, Monty, I got a big scrapbook. Y'all know that I have scrapbooks of all the cowboys. And when I was little, I used to cut everything out that I could find, and I had one on Monty Hale. Well, I had two or three. So I said, Monty, I'm going to send you that because I knew he would. He wasn't around, going to be around much longer, and I sent him that scrapbook. And oh, he, he really had a wonderful time, so I just wrote one of my little booklets about him called uh, Let's Dog Our Steps into a Cowboy Giant, Monty Hill. And he uh, autographed the book and sent it around to a lot of his friends. And in March of this year, March of this year, uh, I found some more stuff and I sent it to him. And he mailed me a letter, and then his wife mailed me a letter the same day. 
was on a Friday. Sunday night, he passed away in his sleep. I think it's March 29th. Monday, I got the letter. He died that night, and I got the letter the next day, and he had autographed me another picture. And I said he was the first cowboy that I ever got an autograph from, and I'm the last one he ever, ever autographed a picture for. And uh, he was a wonderful man. He just started 19 movies, and uh, I guarantee you there's not one person in here knows the name of his steed. He rode a steed across the silver screens at the suburban, and it was called, and his horse's name was Partner. <laughs> All right, I think I'll sing y'all another song. Oh, I, since Donald's here, I better do my Roy Rogers poem. She'll beat me up. But before I do uh, my Roy, I'm going to do another one. Does anybody remember Gabby Hayes? Does anybody remember Smiley Burnett? Does anybody remember Pat, uh, what was his name? But yeah. what was Roy Rogers' sidekick's name? Pat Brady. Pat Brady. Oh, two Pats, huh? Okay, I'm going to do y'all a little poem. I call it Smiley Pat and Gabby. Goes like this. Smiley Pat and Gabby. Now there was a perfect three. They kept us always laughing, leaders of a special breed, thrilling us with their antics across the silver screen. We will ride with them forever, if only in our dreams. There was a couple of fuzzies, California, Cheeto, and Slim, Lax, Alibi, Sandy Poncho, and Little Emmett Lynn, Cannonball, Nugget, and Panhandle. Well, they never got the lady. Pat, of course, was Buckram. Or was he really just a Brady? Their kind is rare and precious and cannot be replaced. Our memories have reserved for them a very special place. All are winners of our award. Oh, we just called it Wacky, and it was in honor of a special breed, Smiley Pat and Gabby. <laughs> I got a new song I, I wrote special for today, and, and I'm telling you, I don't know if I can sing it, but I'm going to try. And, uh, uh oh, somebody's getting a call. I'll let her answer. You know, I'm always saying, I'm always saying, hello, operator, get me one, two, three, four, five, quick. Hello, Sherlock, detective agency, come quick. I'm being held elder president down here at Moldy Man at the cotton mill when I first wrote it. But I want to tell you all about Linda Seller, who lived with a mugly other and two sad blisters. You know that young and handsome prince tried to go and slip her on a mugly other and he fit and did. Then he tried it on her two sad blisters and he fit and did, but he tried it on Linda Seller and it fit and did. <laughs> okay, I'm on. I don't know if I can sing this song, but I'm on track. But this this little poem is called Roy. <clears throat> Maybe y'all remember Roy. Roy was a cowboy king astride his gold rim steed, and when it came to heroes, he stood for everyone. Admired and loved by millions, he made the world a better place. His life's footprints are passing. Sure, glad he passed my way. Times have changed, years have passed since he shook my youthful hand. The memory of his gentle touch remains as it did then. Wish we had a few more like him. His kind is far between. To millions, he is a hero, and he was fit to be a cowboy king. <laughs> guitar and play the piano and sing and write songs. She said, well, if the Lord wants you to do it, he said, he'll educate you. And he must have because, uh, I tell you, I love to write. Now, I did this song especially for today, and I may just have to quit in it because I hadn't practiced it a couple of times. It's called Rolling Free, but I want to have a do it today. Riding Rolling Riding 
and rope and roll in a long scene in a sad old cowboy song as the dogies roll across the long prairie. When her darkness starts its fall, on some wolves make the call, taking me back to the days I was young, wild and free. The winds and rains have washed away the dusty trails of yesterday. He was a phenomenon. He made uh, two world tours, and they were just lying. And you think about these crowds that followed Garth Brooks a few years ago, and Michael Jackson. Well, that was Hoppy in 1950 through 52. He was the number one superstar on television. He got 88% of the viewing audience. But, you know, not many people had TVs back in those days around here, but they did, you know, across the country. And, uh, well, he, he died a millionaire. And uh, this is, uh, the way he got to hop along, Cassidy, uh, you know, he was a huge star in the silent days. He was a big box office. His, he wasn't a wheel boy, and he played in the Ten Commandments. He was a star just like Marlon Brando, Clint Eastwood. He was right up there. And in 1932, there was a stage actor named William Boyd who caused a scene, and they ran it in the paper across the nation, but they put this William Boyd, that we know as Hoppy, they put his picture in. And his career just started like that. He didn't ever quit movies, but he went to the cheap companies, and uh, he changed his name to Bill Boyd, too. And uh, they retracted the story, but they retracted it on the back page of all the newspapers, which nobody's seen. But in 1935, uh, I forget his name, Clarence uh, Mulford wrote the book, and uh, Harry Sherman bought the rights to hop along Cassidy. And he hired James Gleason, y'all might remember him to be Hoppy. And he said, I think I'll get William Boyd to play, Bill Boyd to play, uh, Buck Peters, you know, one of them. He was going to be the star, but the ranch foreman was going to be the star, and Hopalong Cassidy was going to be a secondary role. But when William Boyd saw the uh, saw the script, he said, boy, I like that name. So he went to Harry Sherman and said, I want to play Hopalong Cassidy. And he said, no, I've got James Gleason. And... Uh, and he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. He saw that it was going to be a hit movie, William Boyd did. And he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll let me do Hop Along Cassidy, I'll sign to do a sequel plus four more, which is six movies for a certain price. <laughs> so Clarence Mulford said, well, I can't beat that. So Hoppy made the movie in 1935. It was an astronomical hit, one of the top ten money makers that year. And then y'all know the rest. He just went on and on and on. So I got a little point about him I want to tell y'all. It says, Hoppy left his brand of honor on every trail he blazed. Memories of this man in black can never be erased. His smile lives inside our hearts just like a breath of spring. Astride his snow white stallion, he was our cowboy king. I was but a youngster but my heart began to pound. And I'll remember always Hoppy's grin as he looked down. Yesterdays are not the same, but some things never change. A gentleman riding tall, who was our cowboy king? Hoppy's words taught us well. They have stood the test of time. Wish I could thank him in shaping so many lives just like mine. I'm thankful for the man in black. His sunshine will remain. Oh, here he comes, a snow white stallion, ridden by the cowboy king. <laughs> hey, y'all, uh, I uh, get real, real emotional about everything I do. Garland, you know, that's singing gospel music. I do a lot of gospel music. But I want to tell y'all a story about Gene Autry. And, uh, you know, they, they did have a festival down in Tyoga 
that's where a lot of my stuff, I've donated it to museums, to the California, to Tioga, to Gene Alfrey, Oklahoma, and Kenton, Ohio. And Kenton, Ohio has just kind of taken me under their wings, and uh, I'm kind of their spokesman for Gene Alfrey when I go up there every time. They put me on the radio and all that stuff, because I, if they ask a Gene Alfrey question, if I don't know the answer, I'll make one up. <laughs> and in 1935, Gene Autry, there was three, three Western heroes that rode the top. One day, there was Tom Mix, Buck Jones, and Fred Thompson. Later years, it was Hoop Gibson, Ken Maynard, and George O'Brien. Then, it was Hoppy, Gene, and Roy. Now, they were the major Western stars. All the others were great, like Wild Bill Ellick, Johnny Mac Brown. You all remember them. But Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, and Hopalong Cassidy ran neck and neck, year in and year out. Does anybody know Roy's horse's name? Trigger. Trigger. Does anybody know who named him Trigger? Smiley Burnett named him Trigger. Does anybody know Gene Autry's horse's name? Champion. Champion. Gene Autry rode three champions. One died while he was in the army. The second one was just too high strung, so he had to get a third one. And boy, that third one is a beauty. Right here it is. And, uh, but Gene took the world by storm. And Hopalong Cassidy came up the same year. And they switched out number one and number two positions. But Gene Autry had a personality. William Boyd was an accomplished actor. And all his stuff had to be done just right. He didn't like the fight. He just hated the fight. He said, when I get in the fight, he said, I'm going to draw back and I'm going to hit the guy one time and he's going to go down. And if you'll notice his films, just very few of them are long fights. He usually knocked them out on the first punch because he didn't think it took that many to not the guy out. He was, he was an actor. He looked the part. He acted the part. And he always had a laid back. Gene was flamboyant. And that's why he was rated the number one cowboy. Now, he was the number one cowboy for seven years. And in 1942, uh, they called him up and said, we might draft you, Gene. And he had tons of money tied up in the rodeo. That's, that's why Gene Alfred, Oklahoma, is Gene Alfred, Oklahoma today because that's where he had his, his old barn is still there. It's got his flying eggs on it. It's good to go up there and see it. Just, and I've got pictures of him at the barn, you know. But uh, they said, we may have to draft you. So he went to his boss at Republic Pictures, and uh, her judge said, I'm going to get you deferred. He said, you won't have to go. So Gene talked to his lawyer, and he told him, said, Gene said, it might come back to haunt you someday said, because guys like Hart Gable, James Stewart, Tyrone Power, Robert Mitchum, and all of them are going in. And they said, he said, if you don't go, said, it can come back to haunt you. Well, he gave up about $20,000 a year and went in taking buck private a hundred and something dollars a month. He stayed in there for three years. And uh, Herbert Gates got mad at him and said, I'll just make another cowboy out of him. See, he didn't say we got another that was number three at the time, Lloyd Rogers. He was right behind Hoppy. But they took, he wanted the white Gene out. He told him, he said, I'll ruin you. And, uh, but Gene had had so many fans that while he was gone, they put out a magazine called Autry Aces. All of his fans all across. And thousands of them wrote to every movie magazine in Hollywood that were wherever they made them and requested Gene over and over. So see, he stayed in the magazines and he stayed in front. And he had a radio program that he made in 1940 that went for 16 years to 1956. And he was there every Sunday night. And he was always in the public, but he wasn't making any new movies. So he dropped in. He dropped out of the top ten in 44 and 45. In July 1945, he got out of the service, but he didn't want to go back and make movies for Herbert Gates and Republic because his contract had run out. So they went to court. He was still under contract, but he said they were making millions off of his movies while he was in his old movies, was re 
great issue, and they just kept making money off of it because everybody was going to sin again. He went to court and fought Herbert Gates, but while they were in court, he was always a businessman. Him and Herbert Gates would go golfing and stuff like that. So they were out golfing one day while they were in court fighting each other. Gene said, uh, I tell you what I'll do. He said, I'll make five movies for you, and if I win, I'll come back. In the meantime, because they knew it was going to take a while. It took a couple of years in court, so they didn't, he didn't want to not be in the movie. So he said, I'll make five movies for you. And, and he made the five movies, but he won in court. And in 1947, he started his own company. And besides Hopalong Cassidy, he's the only movie star to own his own films. He bought all of his films. And you know, he made the Range Rider, Buffalo Bill Jr., Andy Oakland. He sold all those TV shows to buy up his own movies. And they've all been restored to brand new, pristine. They're, they're just like new. So if you watch a Gene Autry, get the new ones, and I guarantee you they're just like new. They show them down there, and you ever once again. I go down there, and they look like they were made yesterday. They are really good, and they're top quality. And that's why I always turn my nose when they call them big westerns. And I always ran them running. I said, Hoppy and Rowan was major money because they drove the money. He was at the top ten. In 1940, he was, they said, was number four behind Mickey Rooney, Clark Gable, and somebody else. And uh, they said he was number four, but Hollywood Reporter reported in 19 November that he moved into the number two position. But see, these big companies like MGM, they spent lots of money on these billboard magazines and things, so they had to drop him to four. But uh, if you want to know the facts, there's more people seeing his movies than anything. Okay, now we're talking about Gene Autry, Oklahoma, and that. Another little town is called Kenton, Ohio, 8,000 some population. Each June, they hold Gene Autry Day. And I made a little book. I make a booklet every year, but this one is uh, called Historic Kenton. I did this for uh, June 28, 29, the week the week of June 28 this year. But the day, August 8, 1938, is the day that he uh, actually visited Kenton, and uh, and I made and they celebrate that too. So I made a little booklet for this coming August 8. But in 1937. Kenton, Ohio, they were totally starving up there. I mean, they were in terrible shape. Gene Autry went up, uh, got in touch with them. He didn't go up there until 38. He got in touch with them, with the Kenton Hardware firm, and said he wanted them to make a deal with him to, to make his cap pistols. So if y'all see cap pistols around here made from 1937 to 1952, they were made in cast iron and Kenton hardware. And he went up there, made a deal with them. The first year they sold two million guns across the United States and abroad at 50 cents a piece. And he was supposed to get a nickel, a dollar, I think. And you know, he made tons of money out of that for years and years and years. And, uh, or maybe they got a nickel and he got the most, I don't know. But it's, it saved the town, and he's, he's recorded as, as saving the town. Now, getting back to Hoppy, does anybody remember his horse's name? Oh, Tom Topper, you're right. His first movie, he called him Natty, but his second movie, he called him Topper. And, and so there's Champion, Trigger, and Topper, the three top cowboys. You know, back in those days, you know, I never could get interested in the TV westerns. And I never could figure out why. I never watched Gunsmoke, Wide Earth, or any of them. And the reason they always rode different horses. And I thought, well, and they they kind of criticized Gene and them for riding one horse in a movie. But I always wondered, I said, well, we don't trade cars every time we go out. We drive the same car over and over and over. So I stuck with the Cowboys with the, with the star. Okay, I wanted to do y'all a point about Michael Hill, but I can't find it, so I'm going to do y'all another little song here. Oh, yeah. I usually do this before I sing a Gene Autry song, but this is what I said. When I first laid my eyes upon him, I knew I was captured then for life. 
The cowboy stood far above all others, and I find years are only moments lost in time. A voice touched by some special master, heaven handed him a million dollar smile, softly patting my hand and shoulder, still remains since I was just a child. <laughs> You know, back in my days, uh, the cowboys were bigger than the life. You know, nowadays you see people on TV. You didn't see them in those days. You see them at the movies, and that was it, or, or in the newspapers. And uh, hey, what time? Twenty-two. Okay, I'll do about ten more minutes and quit. And uh, y'all can kind of look at some of my stuff here. Uh, I'm trying to find that my idea point. Oh, yeah, I want to show y'all one other thing. Before I do that, this is real important. In the early days, they made a magazine called Crack Western. This is from 1941. So there was a company that put this out. So another company says, well, what I'm going to do is make a movie magazine just like it. And they called it Movie Western. Now this was July 1941. They put Gene Autry on the cover. And I've got all of them. They just made seven. Gary Cooper, Roy Rogers, and, and Hoppy and all of them are on. And uh, now here is number four of Movie Western. This is uh, 19, January 1942. Now people used to write into these things and asked for their favorite stars. And this is what one guy wrote in. This guy from New Bedford, Massachusetts, wants so-and-so. But what caught my eye was right here. It says, G. Sanders of Denison, Texas, would like a little more about Charles Amen. Isn't that so right? <laughs> okay. Now, when this company that was making this magazine saw this magazine, they said, well, let copycat <laughs> they said he made a movie for a magazine called Movie West. <laughs> so they just come along and said, We'll make our own movie western. And they started out with Roy on the cover called Cowboy Movie Brothers. Then number two had Gene on it. And y'all remember guys like Don Redberry and Buster Kraut and so on. And uh, these are real collector's items, and if you like Randolph Scott, you know I got him or Joel McRae, and let me show you one more. Y'all may not know that was on a bunch of magazines. Now here's a magazine made in the 50s called Movie Thrills, and uh, boy, these are nice. And I used to scrounge for a quarter to get them. <laughs> now, a lot of y'all know Alan Glenn as just a star. A lot of y'all didn't know he was a Western star. You know, he made Shane, Red Mountain, Brandy, Whispering Smith. See, he was just on tons of Western magazines. He loved Westerns, and that's... Uh, so anybody on Western covers, I got them. Like Johnny Mac Brown here, Wild Bill Eddie, Joel McCray. Here's old Johnny Mac, y'all remember him. And I want to show y'all that before I sing another song. <clears throat> Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Here is... Uh, Here's the original Ardmore paper when Gene Autry of Oklahoma became Gene Autry. Now this is a copy of it. I've got the original. It's old and yellow. But uh, they put out a 24 pager that day in 1941, November. And uh, and Gene was there, you know. And that's when that's the day they changed Berwyn, Oklahoma, to Gene Autry, Oklahoma. That was November the 19th, 1941. And he had great plans in that place. His old barn still stands up there. But he went into the service where Pearl Harbor was bombed on December the 8th, about two, two and a half, three weeks later. And what would have happened up there, in 1946, he sold the ranch before he got it, as he came out of the service, and moved his rodeo stuff to Dumas, Texas. And they say his barn is out there. But one other thing I want to show y'all before, I'm, I'm using a lot of time, but uh, I want to show you something. You might find it. Y'all remember the old suburban reader? Mm -hmm. 
You know, they had the Texas and Sherman. I got them all. I mean, you name it, I got them all across the country. Because I used to collect these things. And, uh, and I always wondered, I said, uh, I said, I'd like to have a picture of them things. You know, back in those days, I couldn't afford a camera, but I sure wanted a picture. So I walked up to the theater one day, and I asked the guy, I said, what is that? I said, is that an insert? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you where these newspaper ads come from. He said, no, that's a press book. I said, well, where can I get one? He said, right, uh, National Screen Service, 2012 Jackson Street, Dallas. So I wrote down there and asked them. I said, do y'all have press books? And they wrote me back and said, yes, we have them. They're 10 cents a piece. But said, you've got to be a theater manager to get any. said, you can't just buy them. So I took them. I was, uh, I was pretty young, about 8 or 9, 10 years old. I took a piece of paper and wrote it to top Billy Hogan Theater. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down there and I said, I want, I put five dimes in there. I said, I want these five Gene Autry press books. And by granny, a couple of days later, they come to the house. <laughs> Boy, and then I got $2 worth of dimes and sent down there. And I got every Gene Autry. And Randolph Scott, you name it. But this is where those ads came from. This is called a press book. See? And the old posters out front of the theater, you could, you could order those. Man, they'd cover the whole front if you wanted them. Now, this is one of Whip Wilson. That's a one sheet. You could buy them and everybody. Uh, There's stuff like that. I, I donated all of those to the California Museum of Tobacco. But what they would do, the theaters would pick out the size that they wanted to run and uh, right here. If you get the old Denison Herald, I'll show you the one that's in there on the Denison Herald. It's this one. Played Sunday and Monday, maybe Tuesday. Uh, this was 1951. This is Roy Rogers and Spoilers of the Plains. Now then, little bitty towns like Bells and Savoy, you know, they had a little tiny theater. They didn't send them these because they knew they couldn't afford them. So they sent them a little deal like this. Of the same movie. See, a little tiny thing. Then, of course, the magazine that run things like this, see, it says for eight consecutive years, number one, Roy Rogers, Spoilers of the Plains. Now then, when he was coming up here in 1955, his six things like that, his movies went into reissue. Now, see, this is how they looked when they were new. In 1955, his six, they reissued them. They had about the same thing in them, but you know, they just wasn't expensive because they knew the people weren't going, they weren't going to go to the theater like they had before. You know, but you know, kids kids would always go. Now I got them on Audrey Murphy. Now here's a, here's a popular movie called Son of Pale Face with Roy Rogers, Bob Hope, and Jane Russell. Now something about this movie, if you ever watch it, you watch it close, Roy Rogers is in it for 48 minutes of an hour and a half. Trigger is advertised in here, but Trigger is not in the movie. It is his stunt double called Little Trigger. He is in the movie. A lot of people don't know that. And if you'll notice, if you ever watch the movie, he, boy, he's just as pretty as Trigger was, and he had four white stockings, and he was a real nervous horse in front of the camera. He's always jittery. But if you'll watch that, he, you'll notice that he's not in there. And see, I got all of them. I got Rod Cameron, Wild Bill Elliott. See, they're, they're all the same thing. That, that's where the old ads come from. And uh, Johnny Mac Brown. And, uh, let's see, oh yeah, Donald remembers Alan Rocky Lane. Alan Rocky Lane is stagging blackjack. Now here's Randolph Scott. Now see, this is a huge thing here. These things, they would make them usually four to... Uh, 52 pages. Now this one's got about 30 right here. See, it's just literally filled. But that is, and then here's one. It's a ton. It's just like a book. See, it's got every kind of ad you can want. This is 1946. That's uh, Joel McCray. And uh, I like to show you stuff like that. Oh yeah, I want to show you one other thing. Gene Autry is the only cowboy that made a rock and roll magazine called Rolling Stone. 1973, they put a singing cowboy on the front cover of Rolling Stone. Hey, isn't that something? 
Now I'm going to show you one other thing, and then I'm going to quit. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know the number one hit you look go by Billboard magazine, right? If y'all ever heard of Billboard magazine, it comes out every week. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like, like when the old days. Do you know if you're on the front cover of Billboard? Now that wouldn't happen today, but I'm going to show you one other. There's his sidekick, Gabby. <laughs> I'm not Gabby, probably. Okay, now then one other thing. Gene even had his own magazine called Champion Magazine. That was a little horse name. He, he had Champ had his own TV. Now in, uh, here's TV Guide. Y'all know you can see TV Guide today. Today's the only place TV Guide don't have you get it. It doesn't even look like this anymore. But here it is, in 1952. When this came out, they was every kind of magazine. TV Live, TV Digest, Television Week, TV Today, TV Dial, TV Forecast. It just went on and on and on. Okay, I'm going to sing y'all a couple more songs and quit. Does anybody have any requests? Because I can't think of nothing to sign. What do I do to sign? This is my daughter over here. She guides me and tells me if I do this. You know my favorite. What time is it? Uh, about 8 minutes till. Okay, I'm going to give y'all one little number and quit. But I'm going to tell you, I have had a good time. I, I, I've had a better time than y'all have. <laughs> Can you sing Happy Trails? There you, there you go. <laughs> I'll sing a little bit. How's that? Happy trails to you until Happy trails to you.
several of his his albums. Uh, he had a band that said at one time, uh, and I guess they're the ones on the album. Different people, different ones played different. Most of them were from around here, and he's really he really did a good job. And he even wrote songs and one for one of my class reunions, and we still play it every time we have a class reunion. <laughs> uh, he's a talented guy. He headed the uh, uh, what was it the the he organized the Texas Music Association. Association, and they named outstanding musicians for many, many years, and he headed that for, for a long, long time. So he he knows what he's talking about. He knows he knows westerns. He knows movies. Uh, he knows music, and we're glad to have him here today to put on this program. Okay. You know, for Oklahoma? Yeah. Every year. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm mad at the next year, not going to the one oh. I'll be on, but I'll be on. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a great, that's a great event. That's well, two years ago, but I never get information for last year, so I'm going to go again this year. You know what? Is it last, last weekend, weekend on September? Every year. Every September, last weekend. Last weekend. Yeah, if it's, if it's, if, it's, if, it's, if Thursday starts on the 30th, then it'll go 30, October 1, 2, 3. If it's 23rd, it'll it's whatever it is, that's the last weekend. <coughs> and that's something to see because they have everybody up there. Do you know who the headliner will be this year? Well, I can tell you some of them are going to be there, like uh, Dale Robertson. Yeah. And he's in a wheelchair now. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of Gene Autry's leading ladies will be there. You know, guys like Roy Rogers Jr. and Rex Allen Jr. None of the old cowboys are left. The only one left. And I did a little book about him. He played Buffalo Bill Jr. He was the voice of Pinocchio. His name was Dickie Jones. And he, he played was there two years ago. He's there every other year. And uh, he's uh, he played in the range ride mm -hmm. with Jock Mahoney. He was his sidekick. And he said when when they ceased that, he said Gene Autry didn't want to pay him for doing nothing, so he put him in one called Buffalo Bill Jr. I'll tell you the story he told Oh, uh, uh, one other be there is old Robert Fuller from Laramie and Peter Brown. Who okay. used to play on Deputy Johnny McKay on the lot of men. A lot of TV guys. James Drury. James Drury. Anyway, Dick Jones, they asked him a question. They said, what would you knew Porter Rogers and you knew Gene Autry. said, what would you say was the difference between these two men? And he said, well, it's sort of like this. He said, if Gene Autry, if Roy Rogers was your neighbor, and you went over to his house and told him that your car broke down. Said he was like to say, wait a minute, let me get the clothes on, old clothes and some tools, and I'll go over there and we'll see what's wrong with it. He said, now, if Gene Autry was your neighbor and your car broke down, and you went over to Gene's house and told him the problem, he'd say, come in here and let's get the yellow pages out and see if we can find a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said the best thing about Gene Autry he knew was his checks never mind. <laughs> But he's a Roy Rogers was a hands-on guy, and Gene Autry, you know, he didn't have to get, get done. Uh, you said uh, something about Monty Hale, and uh, I remember when we lived around the Arden, I seem like I remember uh, uh, an article in the Arden right one time saying that Monty Hale, was he from, he wasn't from Oklahoma, was he? Yes. Was he? Everybody. His birthplace is in San Angelo, Texas, and they even, sent, they even celebrated in San Angelo. Uh, but he was actually born in Asia. Okay. And uh, his wife was verified. Well, was his dad? Was he a Methodist preacher? Seemed like he yeah. Was, all right. It seemed like no, his grandfather. Was. Well, maybe that. You know, he had a brother. His name was Bill Hill. He lives in Dallas. He was about nine years younger than Monty, and they split him up when they children, yeah. and they didn't see each other again until they was over 25 years old. Well, it seemed like it was like either his grandmother's father was the uh, preacher and minister for the Methodist Church in Hardborn, and they had a story about the, Yeah, but, uh, the cowboy movies was huge in Texas, and when he went to work, going to be a cowboy star, the boss, Herbert Yates, put down his birthplace in San Angelo, Texas. Uh -huh. He liked the name San Angelo. Well, you know, Roy Rogers, they put down his birthplace, what, Cody Wyoming, uh, yeah. Did y'all know the only state that's round on both ends and high in the middle? Too bad. Ohio. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
You look like a woman works with you. Uh, no. <laughs> but I hang one of my kids on you. Boy, that all is all right. Is it possible to get a copy of your phone? Yeah, I'll give it to you. There it is. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, give, it, give it a copy of my son. Hey, um.